Welcome back to Traded Samurai on YouTube. Today I have a presentation for you. It is called The Good News About Self-Improvement. So if you've been around YouTube for a while, you'll be familiar with self-improvement content. Now this is, comes in a, a range of uh, niches, but it's you could all put it under the umbrella of self-improvement. So the first thing I want to share about self-improvement is that self-improvement is a very, very noble goal. Um, Gandhi said, if one could change their internal state, then they change the external state of the world around them. They change the world that, the way that they're perceived by the world. So self-improvement, if that is the path that you're on, congratulations, because that's a, a noble goal. But today, I hope to share some things that will help you avoid some pitfalls along the path of self-improvement. So uh, these images up here, they represent money, uh, physical strength, martial arts ability, like you'll... Uh, ShreddedSamurai.com is devoted to improving the martial arts ability of its followers. So, right? Self-improvement and a whole different bunch of avenues. But what is this good news about it? What is what is the good news I'm going to share with you today about self-improvement? So, here are some faces you most certainly will recognize. So this is Alex Ramosi. This is Hamza. Uh, this is Casey Zander. This is Greg Doucette. This is Sneeko. So, these gentlemen, they all provide... Um, value and content in their respective niche of self-improvement. So with Hormozy, it's more business-related content. With Hamza, I believe he talks more about fitness and women. Uh, Casey Zander, I think it's more uh, financial, uh, women as well. Greg Doucette, definitely fi uh, physical fitness, bodybuilding. I'm not super familiar with Sneeko, but I assume it's in like the avenue of dating, things like this, things that are supposed to improve your life, right? So on its own, uh, the intention of self-improvement is very, very noble. But this right here says you need, and this is the pitfall I'm hoping to help one avoid on this journey. So if you watch Hormozy's channel, you, if you're not aware, you may start to believe that you need to do certain things. You need to be the salesman. You need this. You need that. Uh, Hamza, you, you need to be more the alpha male, whatever it is, Greg just said, you need to be cutting your calories, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that. So what it is, it's a perpetual cycle of needing. So how do we reframe this? Uh, and what is needing? Is it, uh, is it harmless? Is it, uh, what does, what is needing? So all needs that we describe today in these self-improvement channels are really wants, okay? Um. If you want to go back with me to kindergarten, first grade, they'd put the Venn diagram on, on the board and they'd put needs on one side and wants on the other. And it would help the children contextualize, okay, what is, what is a need, what is a want? And when you would go down to actual needs, it would always be very few, right? You'd say, oh, well, the body needs water, the body needs food, the body would really appreciate some shelter at night, right? So those are the, the basic needs. Other than that, you would have wants. Oh, I, I want to have a nice house. I want to have a nice car. I want to have this career. I want to have that. It's not a need, right? It, it's, it is a want, if we're being honest. So here's a quote from Nikola Tesla. He said, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So what I'm sharing with you today is that wantingness is a real thing. It is a form in the universe. It has a, a vibration. It has a frequency. It is fundamentally a source of energy that a human being will use their life, uh, will, will feel their life with, right? So, I want to have a great physique, so I'm going to the gym because I want to have a great physique. That's, uh, you're energizing that pursuit with the wantingness, right? So, here's the problem with wanting. Wantingness is far too weak to achieve anything in reality. All wantingness truly is, is a subconscious programming to yourself that you do not have. For if you had, you would not want, right? So wanting teaches you to not have. As this desire becomes frustrated, it leads to anger. Now, anger is actually uh, energetically more powerful than wantingness. So you've actually improved in that way already just by moving from desire to anger. So Alex Hormozzi, I think I saw him uh, maybe with a tweet the other day. It was like, use what you have. Uh, if you have anger, 
use it. I, I can't argue with that to an extent, right? So if the only thing you're in is anger, then use that anger to get you to the next level. But understand that anger is not where you would ever want to stay in the long run. And if anger is used to build up a false sense of reality, it's uh, used to build up a false sense of pride, right? So these delusions, we feel comfortable, okay, because I really wanted that nice house, right? And I got angry about it when I didn't have it. And that was enough for me to get it. And now I have pride in that house. So I have established the basis of my life on the fact that I am prideful in what one has. Okay, what is going to occur from that? What is going to occur when I'm just prideful in what I have? That's the foundation of my life is my pride. We've seen it before. Uh, it's always been said that pride is a devil. Uh, pride comes before the fall. It's well known that pride just leads to uh, disintegration if you sit in there long enough, right? So what is the solution? Let's talk about love, okay? So this is Rumi. This is a poem he wrote probably uh, maybe a thousand years ago. It says, in every religion there is love, yet love has no religion. So he was he had noticed Okay, all these religions, everything that is supposed to be sacred, they talk about love. But none of them can claim it individually. None of these religions can say, yeah, we were the ones who came up with love. No, it's just that love is, and that if, uh, and it's associated with those who appreciate the divine, right? And then here is Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus declared, love the Lord with all your, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Now, I'm going to tell you that's a perfectly true statement. But if you would allow me to recontextualize it for those of us who are more um, intellectual, more attracted to the thinkingness of the modern day, right? So you may have heard humans attempt to describe God before. Uh, some human-like being sitting up in the sky, watching over. Um, maybe he's vengeful, he's scornful, right? But it was Sigmund Freud who said that all that these negative projections one can place onto God are not reflections of the true God, but what they are is the subconscious shadow being projected onto him of the human being. So if one is angry, then they'll see God as angry. If one is prideful, then they see God as scornful, right? So these are, um, it's the, the frame of lens you're choosing to view it from. So what would a true God be like, right? Take with me that there is a true God. Maybe you don't believe that, but what if there was one, what would he be like? For him to be omniscient, omnipotent, uh, know all, does all, he would have to be everything, right? So he would have to be nearly everything. So what does that mean then? When Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, he's telling us, love everything, right? Love everything. So for self-improvement, what we're going to do is we're going to energize life with love. So do what one loves and love what one does. So when you go to the gym, it's not because, oh, I want to have a great physique or I'm angry because I don't have a great physique. No, you love to take care of the body. You love to go to the gym and take care of the body and get strong. Um, if it's a career, it's not because if I don't uh, crush that sales number that this quarter, then I'm a failure. No. You love being a salesman. You love the value that it gives. You love experiencing what it's like to make sales. Okay? It's not that it's going to require you to do anything drastically different, but allow for the truth to recontextualize your own life. Allow yourself to do what you love, and what, what is done, love it. Um, to describe love, it's actually easier to say what is not. So it's not emotional. Emotional is polar it swings up and down, right? Um, anger is emotion, but even there's more emotions like courage. These things come and go. It's also not logical. Um, if you are so blessed to come into a loving family, or really any family that, to that extent, there's always that just innate uh, love of them. There's just there's that core uh, the core lovingness that, that's always there, right? So it's not logical. It's not like you thought of something and you're like, okay, that proves that I'm, I'm, I should love. Love is not provable. If you think about all the acts of uh, self-sacrifice throughout history, for example, you know, a mother sees a child walking in front of a car and she pushes a child out of the way. 
It's not logical. She wasn't in her head thinking, well, if uh, that kid gets hurt instead of me, then it'll be uh, a net gain for... No, it's not logical. It's just love. So um, if you're in an area... If it has to be logical, just know it's not love. It's also not possessable. Uh, there's no one that can possess love. You can't hold on to love. If it's something that you feel the need to hold on to, what it is is an attachment. It's an emotional attachment. It's not love. So it's not possessable, it's not logical, and it's not emotional. So what is the core message today is that these things, whether it be business, relationships, uh, fitness, any of it, do yourself the favor now instead of saying, okay, if I achieve all these things, then there will be love. Mm -mm, cut to the chase. Start with the love and then watch the way that that will change your life. Watch that the way the energy of love. It just can't help but do it. You know, this is a, a fundamental law of consciousness is that love will push you a whole lot further than any uh, delusions, pride, any of that. So please, I inform you, uh, consider the possibility that one can energize their life with love. Uh, give it a try. Maybe, maybe you'll say, no, love, that isn't it. But most of the people who are in love, they're not coming back down to talk about how bad love is because they're just going to stay in the loving state. So uh, thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you very soon. Thank you for watching today's video. If you love that one, check out shirtedsamurai.com. Uh, I'd, I'd love to have you check it out. Maybe you'll find something else you'll love on there like the uh, Shredded Samurai Muay Thai Instructional, our daily inspirational book to fulfill a more loving state of being each and every day. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you again very, very shortly.